Box 96 FM. Now, on to uh, False Widow Spiders. Jamie was on with us yesterday. He has <clears throat> 14, around 14, they're hard to count, they don't sit still, around 14 spiders presently living in his garden shed. And he reckons that they're false widows. And he knows that they sting or that they bite or whatever they do. He's not particularly afraid of them. They're not particularly aggressive. He wants to get them out of there, though, because he doesn't want them breeding and multiplying. But he doesn't know how to do it safely. He doesn't want to kill them. Uh, We put it out there yesterday. There might be some more expertise on this than we have. John Dunbar, good morning to you. Good morning. We have a number of these little fellas have have come home, probably in suitcases from the Canaries where they're native and things like that. How do you tell the difference between an actual false widow and, and one that isn't? Um, well, the false widows have uh, very clear distinctions. Um, they're, they've got a big bulbous abdomen. Uh, they're usually very dark brown to black in coloration, especially when, when they're very mature. And uh, they have uh, a distinctive... A cream crescent around the front of the abdomen and it's very uh, notable when especially in the evening and night time when it gets dark and they come out onto the webs if you shine a torch at them they'll just stand out like a beacon mm. Jamie seemed to be of the impression they're more far more afraid of him than anyone is of them that's true um, I, I spend a lot of my time sampling for him because we, we work on the venom so I need a lot of spiders to get venom and it's so difficult at times to try and actually catch them because at the first sign of even approaching the web, often they will just dart into a corner and they won't come back out. Mm. You nearly need to bait them out, you know, with, with, with twitching the web a bit to just stay kind of... Is there a bite? So there's, is, the, is, it's a, is it a sting or a bite first? And are they dangerous? It, it, it's a bite. And um, we're, we're, although we don't really regard them as uh, a significant threat, their bites uh, and, and the venomation from the species is uh, far more significant than what we'd be used to here. But we're not at the, you know, we're nowhere near saying that they're life-threatening or anything at this stage. Yeah. They, according to some information we got here, they can produce up to 300 or to 200 eggs a month between March and October. That's yeah. a lot of baby spiders. It is. So yeah. how does Jamie stop that happening in his garden shed? Um, unfortunately, uh, assuming that they are uh, false widow spiders, uh, I, I've it's lived in Cork, I've no doubt they are. We've recorded them in Cork and we're still getting reports from them in Cork. And they're, they're kind of, uh, really, uh, to put it bluntly, they're here to stay. Um, they're, they came around 20 years ago and they've just become, in, in some counties, some of the most uh, common urbanised spiders. Yeah. Uh, they... They survive all the way through the year. They're active all the way through the year, uh, even in the colder months where most spiders wouldn't be. Yeah, because um, they come from, they're native to the Canaries, for example, and, and places like Madeira, where it's warm all year round. Yeah. You'd imagine our frosty winters would do for them. Yes, yeah, so, well, I mean, they, they, they just have a cold tolerance, even though they, you know, there are species that do uh, live in, in, in uh, hot climates, but they do actually survive... Uh, for example, you've got uh, turtles in North America that thrive all around the southern states, and yet in, in Northern Europe, uh, they, they survive all year round in ponds. Yeah. So what can Jamie do, John? Um, the best thing to do is to try and catch them. Um, if, you, if you have like a container or something, if you don't want to kill them and you want to release them somewhere else, try and try and catch them in a jar. Uh, or if you have any type of, like, you know, you can buy some uh, spider catchers in DIY stores and you can just release them in the garden or if there's a a field nearby, you can just kind of uh, pop them there. But the likelihood is they'll be back. uh, Plenty of areas where I sample, it's not two weeks and I could go back and they'll be full of big uh, false wood spiders again. Mm. So it's a real, uh, one of the things I do is really to discourage, you know, pesticides and stuff like that because all you're doing is eliminating everything. They're killing all the other spiders, especially our native ones. Mm. And you, you clear the patch. And what happens yeah. is the false widow spiders are the first to return and yeah. colonise because they thrive on this type of habitat. Yeah. Is is and it true that they eat other spiders? Yes, they, they do eat other spiders as well. They're, they're very generous. It's one of the reasons why they're so successful here. In addition to, you know, having producing lots of babies and surviving the cold months, they eat everything they can uh, overpower and subdue. 
Okay. All right. So, Jane, we just need to try to catch them. Maybe, yeah. may, maybe you could advise him over the phone or something if we were to put you in contact or something That's like that. Problem, yeah. All right. Okay. John Dunbar, uh, entomologist, insect expert in Galway at the NUI Galway. Thank you. Eighteen fifty seven one five nine nine. They're here to stay. <laughs> oh God! A lot of people will be squirming in their seats listening to that. The false widow spider here to stay. Corks ninety six FM.